is that the three women were located or uh, were walking on the east sidewalk of Southwest 6th Avenue between Southwest, uh, uh, Southwest Harrison and Southwest Montgomery Street when they were struck by the vehicle. Uh, again, we're in the very early stages of the investigation. Members of the Police Bureau's Traffic Division and Detective Division are responding to the scene to continue this investigation. We expect that there will be additional updates as the day goes on. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So. Can, Can you, you provide any information? About the vehicle? So at this time, uh, very early on in the investigation, we're talking to multiple witnesses. Uh, as we get more information, we'll be providing more information about um, uh, the specifics of what we believe occurred today and uh, the description of the vehicle. Do you know at all if it was on purpose? On purpose? That's something that, uh, again, very early in the investigation, uh, but uh, we will continue to investigate and uh, do not know at this time if it was intentional. Witnesses describe a blue SUV. Located. Can you confirm that? I'm not able to confirm that at this time. Has that driver been located? Uh, last I checked, uh, the driver and vehicle had not been located, uh, but uh, officers are. Uh, information about this incident has been shared with officers uh, around the city and with uh, other law enforcement uh, agencies uh, in the area. And what have witnesses told you about where, what happened? Did it, did it jump the sidewalk? Yeah. So what I do know is that the uh, pedestrians were on the, si the east sidewalk of Southwest 6th Avenue when they were struck by uh, the vehicle that uh, was reportedly also on the sidewalk. Could How the long was the vehicle had on the sidewalk? Medical emergency? Uh, again, early in the investigation, uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, questions that we're going to be asking, a lot of things we're going to be looking into. One of the, the things that we're doing right now is uh, collecting surveillance footage. We are asking if there were any witnesses in the area at the time that captured cell phone video, that uh, they contact the Portland Police Bureau non-emergency line at 503-823-3333. Uh, detectives would definitely, one, want to talk with people that are witnesses, but also view any cell phone uh, video footage or surveillance footage if you're a nearby business that uh, possesses Any that. Any estimate of how fast the car was going or how long it actually stayed on the sidewalk? Not at this time. Again, as the investigation goes on, that's something that our traffic division uh, will be looking into. To be clear, are you considering this a hit and run? So at this time, what we do know is that there are uh, there, there was at least three people that were injured. I should mention, we believe that there might have been a fourth person that was injured that left the area, was not transported by ambulance. We would like to also be able to talk with that person. Um, but uh, at this time, yes, we do know that there was uh, people that were injured by a vehicle and that were uh, attempting to locate the driver that left the scene after the crash. How many people were in the car? Again, at, uh, early on in the investigation, and uh, I don't have that information for release. Do you know if any time. of the uh, victims are students? Um, I don't know at this time. Can I do know that the victims are uh, adult females. Can you comment on how similarity to you know other this being to other incidents of cars on sidewalks and pedestrians uh, here in Portland now? Uh, say again. Can you comment on how this is similar to other incidents around the world of cars getting on sidewalks hitting pedestrians? So uh, again, early on in the investigation, um, so. Once we get more information, um, we'll be sharing that. Uh, but at this time, I don't have uh, more information to provide on, on that. What so happens moving forward now? So uh, Southwest 6th Avenue between Harrison and Montgomery will be closed for the next four to five hours uh, while we continue to process the scene. Uh, detectives uh, are still uh, responding at this time. Uh, they will be contacting witnesses, uh, local businesses, gathering surveillance. Again, we're looking for, uh, and I, uh, as we get more information, uh, likely provide information about the vehicle uh, as we continue to, to look for that vehicle. Um, so early in the investigation, we have a lot more in the day uh, to do uh, regarding this. Uh, Lieutenant Schroeder is here to kind of talk about the, the fire uh, response, fire and medical response. Well, one more question, Sergeant, real quick. Yeah. Any indication that this is an intentional terrorist act like some of those other attacks that were referenced earlier? Yeah. Again, very early in the investigation, uh, investigators are going to be out here throughout the day contacting uh, the witnesses, victims, uh, and gathering information. But you haven't ruled that out. You haven't yeah. ruled it in so, four hours. I mean, 
so still early on in the investigation and uh, as with any investigation uh, our investigators are you know take many things into account many important aspects of the investigation into account we, we Chris, can you real quickly talk about the scene the initial moments following and how officers train or prepare for handling a situation like what we saw yeah and i think uh, lieutenant shorter will be able to help us with that as well uh, but you know the the primary focus of uh, officers and emergency medical responders is to respond to the scene make sure it's safe uh, for the responders and community members, uh, render uh, aid to those who are injured, uh, for police to try and get information on the suspect, uh, what, other, what modes of transportation they might be using, getting that information out. Um, I'll let uh, Lieutenant Shorter talk about the uh, medical response. Everyone uh, was taken to OHSU? Uh, so at this time, uh, people have been taken to area, uh, area hospitals. Can you repeat their, their condition once again? Yeah, so at this time, it is my understanding that two of, uh, of the injured uh, have serious life-threatening injuries and one has serious but what is believed to be non-life-threatening injury. And to confirm, you are looking for a vehicle? Yes. Actively okay. searching? Yes, yes, we are. Lieutenant? Lieutenant Tommy Schroeder, uh, Portland Fire and Rescue. Uh, when we received the initial call, it came in as a single pedestrian struck. We sent one fire apparatus and an ambulance. Uh, as calls came into the 911 center, we upped it by one ambulance. And as the incident escalated uh, via other uh, 911 calls, we balanced it what's called a, an MCI. And that's basically a, a code that allows us to get extra apparatus here along with five ambulances, just because of the unknown nature uh, of how many uh, patients that we were gonna have. So. Uh, we had apparatus uh, here within minutes and treating patients and assisting AMR with the, the transport. Can you describe the scene at all uh, in those first moments? You know, I wasn't here at the time and I haven't had a chance to, to speak to those on-scene companies yet. I think the chatter on the scanner was mass, ca mass casualty when we hear that. Obviously, that makes sense, shivers down a lot of spines. What exactly does that mean and how do you guys prepare for a quote-unquote mass casualty incident? Mass casualty uh, gives us a higher uh, degree of awareness of what we could be coming into. Technically, it's a code that we use in dispatch that balances it to the extra apparatus. Uh, generally, it's anything more than three or four patients. Um, and so when we when you see that code come up on the, the BOEC feed or, the, or hear it on the scanner, it just means that there's uh, more than, than the uh, average call as far as patients. That is going to be one of the, the pieces of evidence that the traffic investigators are going to be looking at as the investigation continues uh, to see if there was any damage. At this time, so early on, like uh, Lieutenant Schroeder said, uh, just getting here, just starting the investigation, uh, don't don't uh, have that yet. Where can we expect the next update from you? Uh, so I'm going to go back. Um, I don't want to set a firm time, but I would hope within the next two hours that we'll do another update, if, uh, if not before. We'll be uh, sending out a press release, and then also, uh, please, uh, either fire or police will be sending out tweets as we go along here. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, Lieutenant Shorter said, initially very quickly evolving situation as uh, more and more information came in. We still have a lot of information to gather. Uh, it's a, a somewhat of a complex crime scene, um, and so we'll be working, Portland Fire Bureau and the Police Bureau will be working um, on getting information uh, out and where we will be meeting uh, for future uh, for, for future uh, press so the, the bureaus believe there's a continued threat to the arrest and uh, So still early on in the investigation, uh, as uh, I get more information, I'll release that. Um, at this time, uh, we do have officers that are looking for uh, a, a, the involved vehicle uh, and possible suspect. Just to confirm, you said crime scene. Does that mean you suspect it's a crime and not some type of yeah. health issue? So, you know, we use the, the term crime scene, it, uh, crash scene, crime scene, um, kind of, uh, it can be interchangeable. Um, what we do know, though, is that we have uh, three people that have been injured today and a vehicle that left the scene after the, those persons were injured.